What's going on guys? Today we have 21 Savage Red Rum tutorial and breakdown. There's a ton of fun things you can learn from this one, uh, both in the editing software as well as a tiny little breakdown on some techniques that they use throughout the music video that I think can help you a lot. As always, if you are new here, consider subscribing for more videos like this. Leave a like if you guys do enjoy. We have this After Effects video today and then in a couple of days we have a new Blender tutorial. I just announced a huge update for my new Blender plugin. You can find that on my website as well as a bunch of music music video editing assets like my mixed media bundle that'll help you with a lot of the things that we're showing you in here. So with that said, let's hop in and get started. All right, guys. So for the green screen paper tear, you're going to need a physical piece of green paper. I got this one from Michael's. I think it was like 99 cents. Just make sure you can rip it. This one I can't get too close because you see there's this ring light. So there'll be a giant shadow. So I'll probably just scale it in. You just want to place it in the center of the frame of the camera. There we go. So I'm going to do the actual post work and keying within After Effects. First off, I'm going to go to the effects and look up a key light effect and then drop that onto the clip. Then we can grab the screen color here and just select the green paper. And we're already getting a decent job. And for this, you see, we're going to need to scale this up, you know, something like this. If you have any artifacts here, you can scroll over to this little green, blue and red. Change this from RGB over to alpha and you can actually see this a lot better. Open up the screen matte section on the left and then you can use these clip white and clip black values. You just want to make this as transparent as possible. So as black as possible. And you see if we go back to RGB, this is fully transparent. Now we can bring in any other footage. So I'll just drag in some stock footage here. And we're going to drag this as a layer below. And there we go. That's how we can get that paper rip effect. If you want, you can add in an After Effects camera to have some zoom controls, or you can just go to the scale of this original clip, keyframe all of these, and then click uh, reset. Let's open up transform. You see there's like a little reset button right here. You can click this and it'll go back to the original. So from there, you'll get the sort of zoom out as you rip away. And you may want to tone down the green screen when you do that, just so you don't get any craziness. If you want to fully control the mask, you can actually click control D to duplicate this, delete the key light from the top duplication. And then you can just use a little mask to make sure that none of the areas you don't want being key lighted out are being affected. So I'll click M and just keyframe the mask path here. And then I'll just zoom up. And I'll make sure that this mask is just being adjusted. And there we go. Pretty cool. Pretty smooth. All right, guys, so for this little freeze frame sequence, so I'm guessing they just took a lot of pictures on set. They probably just put it into this fast snapshot mode, grabbed a bunch of pictures and just dropped them in the sequence to create that sort of fast flicker look. You can do that yourself with pictures or if you want to create that sort of look with a video, you can also use something like a posterized time effect in Premiere or After Effects. You can just lower down the frame rate to something like six and you're going to get this sort of slow frame by frame look. You can also Pre-compose this right here. We'll move all attributes into the new comp once we have that sort of picture flipbook. And we're just going to speed this up with some time remapping. So we'll go to time, enable time remapping, and we'll just drag the end about halfway. So that will allow you to control the speed of it. Now let's actually add in the freeze frame. So we're going to bring in another shot and we'll bring in here. So we're going to create a little transition right about here. We're going to start that transition into this clip. So let's click control shift D just to split this clip and then delete the end. Let's take the clip we're going into and we're just going to drag that in a layer above. Now we need to create our freeze frame effect. So I'm going to go to the very beginning of this clip. I'm just going to move over one frame. You can do that by clicking page down on your keyboard. And then I'm going to click control shift D just to split that. Let's take this one frame of the next clip. I'm going to click control D just to duplicate that. And then I'm going to right click, go to time and freeze frame. We can drag this for however long we want and then just move it a little bit before so that we're going to get this sort of pop into the video. Once you have that, we just need to mask out our freeze frame clip so we can go up and grab our pen tool. And I'm just going to do a rough little mask here and I'm going pretty quick. It's going to be pretty sloppy, but you guys get the idea like this. So here is our freeze frame. You just get the pop in and then it goes into the rest of the footage. You can adjust the length of that however you want. Now they also in the original music video did a little bit of a wipe away of the background. You can do that just by selecting the bottom part here before the transition. We're going to again click control shift D and I'm just going to create another mask for this new clip. So I'm just going to kind of create this sort of jagged circle shape like this. Let's click M to show those mask options and we're going to change the mask 
Instead of add, we want it to be subtract because we want to cut away. And then we're going to animate this mask. So under mask path, just click on the keyframe toggle. Let's drag to the end and let's take this mask and just swivel it up. We're also going to want to make it so that the bottom is extended as well. It's wiping away the entire scene to get something like this. Now what you can do is you can also just duplicate this or even just bring this layer all the way beneath and then just extend it a little bit so that you'll see the new background coming in. And that'll give you this sort of wipe away effect, sort of like a paper rip, but you're just doing it with a simple little mask. So yeah, just some simple cuts, some simple masking techniques. You can do this in Adobe Premiere as well. It's really just, like I said, masking and cutting the clips. Now for our paper texture overlay, I just looked up some images on Google and I found this one, it's sort of like a split screen. There's a couple other ones that you can test with as well. So go ahead and just find something you like and download that. Once you download it, I'm gonna drag it straight into After Effects and let's actually create a new composition for this. So we'll drag in our paper, we'll drag in a shot. If you look up paper rip texture overlay, these ones are also very useful for creating some sort of like an alpha mat or a uh, split screen look. So I'm gonna grab some of these as well. So first of all, let's take our paper texture here. We're going to go to mode and we're just going to change our blending mode so that we can actually see through this. So I'm going to put this on something like screen uh, or maybe even color dodge. You guys can experiment with that however you like. What you want to do is just take a couple of frames of the bottom clip and just cut it. And you can do this with multiple clips. Just cut a few frames and just place them here. Now what you can do is you can grab your original clip. You can grab your texture. Place it so there's this sort of cross pattern across his face. Then we can just grab our pen tool. We'll grab a second clip and place it beneath like this. We'll take the top clip and we're going to add a mask just to cut away one section of the cross. Then we'll click M and we're going to switch that mask again. Instead of add, we want it on subtract. So an easy little way where you can create these sort of mix and match images. If you want, you can sort of line up the parts of the face like they did in that original music video. But it's a cool way just to sort of create this sort of collage. And if you want, you can go frame by frame, have it changing every single time. It'll take a little bit of legwork, but it's the same steps that I just showed you there. That's one way to do this. The other way is instead of using masking and just one overlay texture, what you could do instead is actually use one of those alpha matte paper rip textures. So let's bring in this one and alpha matte. Essentially, we just have black and white. We can drag this in. So what we can do with this, instead of using masking, we can just grab the clip beneath right here. We can come over here to where it says track mat. If you're not seeing that, just click on toggle switches and modes. But with track mat, you're going to see these little drop downs. We can click the drop down and we can track mat to this, which is our alpha mat paper texture. And now right here, you're going to see these little switch. It's alpha mat selected. You can switch to luma mat. You're going to start to see that. So that will give you this sort of ripped across look. And you can do the same thing. You can sort of match things up if you want to create like different face collages. If you are interested, I actually have a giant paper animation and mixed media bundle on my website. If you want some nice high quality 4K overlay textures, they all come with the image stills as well as animated. Again, if you guys want to use that mixed media bundle, you're going to have a lot of different options. Uh, a lot of these also have that alpha mat that I was talking about, and they're a lot higher quality as well. Just change your blending mode and just give it this nice sort of texture over everything. So that is our paper textures, alpha mats, and animations, just some masking, changing our blending modes, and if you need to, using an alpha mat. All right, guys, and now for one of the most clever parts of the music video, this sort of floating object that you can interact with. I'm not going to show you the full footage. I know the advertising things on YouTube can be finicky, so instead I'm just going to show you exactly how you can create this sort of illusion where you have something floating in the air. So this is actually very easy to do. In the case of the music video, they may have had a little tray mounted to the camera so that they could actually swivel the camera and see the object move with them. In this case, I'm just going to use a tripod and I'll show you how to remove the tripod. So we're just going to click this little button here to export frame. And I'm doing this in Adobe Premiere. You can do the same in After Effects if you want. And I'm just going to name this clean plate. So in Photoshop, I opened up that clean plate image. So all you have to do here, you can either use your lasso tool or any other selection tool in the top left. I'm just going to use the lasso tool and I'll first select this wire. So once you have that selection, just click on generative fill. And for the prompt, I'm just going to write remove a wire. 
So you see just like that, very simple. We can do the same with this. I'll click generative fill and I'll click remove tripod. And there we go. Now we just have this object floating in the air. And if there's any issues with uh, lighting or artifacts or whatever, because this one's even such an easy background, I could even come in and use like the smudge tool, the blur tool, whatever. What you can do now is just export this new clean plate as a PNG. And then we can bring that image back into Premiere and just drag it in a layer above and you see instantly everything goes away. If you want to see your footage alongside this, you see this is just an image. This is just used for removing these parts. What we can do is we can create a little mask and let's just lower the opacity of this for now so we can actually kind of see where we want to get rid of. So we're going to create a mask and we're essentially just going to mask around the area that we want to remove. Put the opacity back up. And because we're on a tripod, now you can have moving footage with everything masked out. And if you need to, you can come in here, you can feather the mask if you want to soften those edges. So there you go, almost perfectly seamless. And you can even interact with things in your scene once you do this. Yeah, very cool effect. I wanna talk about something that I think they did very well in this music video that I think you can learn from. So the first example of this is at 120. And what they're doing here is they're just setting up a tripod and they use a tripod for a lot of these scenes, which actually makes a lot of the editing work easier later on because there's no movement to account for. So there's no tracking. But aside from that, they're essentially just placing a tripod in a lot of these scenes, sort of like you're a fly on the wall uh, for this scene. They're speeding up a lot of it to create this time lapse. They'll make some cuts like this. Uh, they'll do some more speed ups, but they're really just placing a tripod in an area and making you feel like you're part of the environment, immersing you in things. And I think that's something important to keep in mind with B-roll, because a lot of the time people will go out and just get B-roll of like random images. Doing something as simple as this, just putting you in the environment so that you're an observer can really create some cool shots, especially when you're doing simple things just like cutting clips, creating match cuts. Uh, let's show you this other spot right here, which I thought was really great. And we can talk about match cuts a little bit more. So right here, 153, they're using a track lock. And we'll talk about that when we hop in the editor just to focus the camera. But aside from that, they're just focusing on one thing. In this case, it's just a hand. And what they're doing here is they're using the match cut. And you've heard me say that a lot. I'm going to leave my full match cut tutorial and guide down below if you want to learn more about it. But essentially, it's just an object of similar shape in the same position from one frame to the next. So right here, you see person's hand is center screen. Right when you go to the next frame, it's the exact same hand in center screen. When you do something like that, when you match up the composition of two different frames, you get this really nice and seamless transition. Again, it's my favorite transition. If you want to learn more about it, link will be down below. So yeah, I thought that was done really well. And that's something that you can learn from and take away from that isn't just an editing tip or trick. So after that, they have a few more masking techniques. We talked about that at the beginning when we were doing some of the freeze frame stuff. From here, they did the inverse instead of using a mask to sort of wipe away. They just masked out the house and then keyframed the position so that it just sort of pops up. Same for here. They're just masking out areas such as this tunnel. So if we were to do something like that, it's really just paying attention to different shapes which you see in your footage. For example, right here, we have a decent square shape, pretty easy shape to mask out. We can do something like this. Just draw your mask. Again, you want to click M and switch it. Instead of add, you want to go to subtract. From there, you have a lot of options for what you want to do. Now, first off, if you have moving footage, you see if I move this, the mask is just going to float around in space. So what you need to do is actually right click on this mask and you want to go to track mask. And then you can click play up here and that's going to track along the footage and keep that mask in place. Now, if they move in front of it, it's going to remove the illusion. So keep that in mind. But that'll allow you to actually have a bit of movement here. And that's enough for us to create a little bit of a transition. So if you're just zooming through something, what you can do is you can add a transform effect. You can add a 3D camera. I think it's best using a 3D camera. So you just right click in this gray space. You go to new and you want to go to camera. Once you've added in that camera, you need to click toggle switches and modes down here. And you need to go over to your footage and just enable this little cube 3D layer switch so that the camera will actually work with that layer. Then you just select your camera, you open up the transform option for it, and you can click all of these to set a keyframe, drag a tiny bit, then click C on your keyboard to actually toggle through the camera controls. Let's click C again, go to the zoom. And using those, we can actually create our own little zoom through. We use those keyframes just to do something like this. That allows you just to zoom through things that you've masked out. And if you want this to look a lot better, I recommend you click on this motion blur switch and you'll want to do that with the layer as well. Go to the motion blur switch, toggle switches and modes to see that. 
turn that on for the layer. And now you're immediately going to see, see the before and after getting some realistic blur. Last step here is just to add something underneath this layer. So we can just take the footage that we want to transition into, place this all the way beneath so that it's behind what's going on here. And then you can just scale this, orient it how you want. And then finally, for probably my second favorite effect in the music video is this freeze frame face as I've been calling it. And I've actually created a full 20 minute tutorial on doing this in After Effects. So I'm not going to show you all the steps here just to save you some time. If you're specifically interested in that, you can use the link down below. Not only is that tutorial gonna show you how to do this, but it also goes a little bit more in depth with tracking. So you can have this sort of full 3D swivel and tilt perspective. Definitely an awesome look for here. It'll be a bit easier because they shot this on a tripod so they don't have to do any tracking. So the tracking portion will be very minimal, but if you're interested in that, definitely go and check that out. So that's all for this tutorial, guys. I hope you did enjoy. Definitely a really cool music video. I've been doing a little bit less editing music video tutorials and sort of throwing in a lot of 3D stuff there, just because personally, I feel like if I'm making a tutorial for you guys, I wanted to bring something new to the table. A lot of music videos out there, they're the exact same steps. And you see, even in this video, there's a lot of similar things that I've talked about. But there's also a lot of new things that I haven't talked about, and I thought that that made it worthy of making a tutorial. So let me know what you think about that. Let me know if you want to see more music video things. Next week, we have a video titled Five Music Video Ideas Using Blender 3D, which is a free 3D software. You guys may have seen me talk about that a bunch. So hope you're excited for that. Other than that, as always, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for supporting, and I'll see you guys in the next one.